This is a new VW T-Rock facelift here with Thomas and Auto Crew. Let's take a closer look. New color here also with escort gray. It's not a matte color, but it has a matte appearance. New front grille you can see here with this kind of honeycomb structure on the inside. Definitely sport here. This is also here the R-Line and the R-Line moves closer visually to the true R model. New headlamp unit here also. Standard LED, optional. You can see here the IQ light. These are the matrix LED lamps and also with the interesting daytime running light, but here also an additional one in the lower part. Formerly only the true R model had that, now also for the R line. So definitely a sporty look in the front. We will also soon show you the true R model and also in comparison the style model which is a little bit less sporty. The length here 4 meters 23 or 166 inches. It's actually really, really short or small, but it has still a very strong appearance. Here also with the contrasting roof, you can also get now a black package or black design package. And you also get this black mirror caps here and also this bow here and also around the windows in high gloss black and also black wheels are available. They come from 16 to maximum 19 inch and these are indeed the biggest 19 inch wheels. Once again here in the R-Line styling and crossover cladding because this crossover or small SUV is still supposed to have this off-roadish look. Normal suspension is available all in the optional DCC, the dynamic chassis control, that's the adaptive suspension. If you go for the R model, the car sits 20 millimeters lower. Towards the rear, we can see here there's an interesting design styling package here for today, also with this carbon fiber alike styling here in the huge C pillar. And towards the rear, if you got the matrix lamp in the front, you also get new rear lamps right here with a new modern styling and also then with a cascading turning indicator. Other than that, you have this typical hatch styling here in the rear. And if you go for the optional electric tailgate, it now also features this foot kick mechanism from below. Uh oh. No one can escape the Auto Gefühl fake exhaust police. Well, big alert here for our squad because this is the pure form of a fake exhaust, even with real fake, you know, the <laughs> one of the most sophisticated fake exhausts there is, where you can really touch on the inside and there's really nothing. So I really have to say, this is a very beautiful fake exhaust, but it remains fake. <laughs> and you also have a welcome show now, welcome light show here for a car in this segment here. You can see very unusual that we already have that here. Nice feature. You start with the base T-Rock, then you can put the live trim level and then the top trim levels, either the R-Line or the style, which we have here. And I will tell you why I would go for the style trim level, especially because of the interior features to come very soon. Here on the exterior, you can see the style model is already quite sporty now. Also but then with a different bumper, contrasting colors. And here the daytime running light in the lower part is different. Then he has this ring form, but also looks quite interesting. The color here, by the way, is called petroleum blue. Yeah, this is the question if you could nowadays call a color petroleum, right? <laughs> These are 19 inch wheels here, by the way, also in a different styling, but also the biggest ones available. And we have some, you know, tricks when we do photo shootings, for example. Here you can see the VW logo here, it, you know, doesn't stand upright. And it's not that important, but sometimes it looks better when the logos also stand upright. And then we have this um, small rubber device, and then you can actually, you know, put it to that and put this one out. <laughs> there we go. And then, for example, if you want to really be meticulous, like we are in Autogefühl, then you can also put the logo here on an you know, upright way. <laughs> and the style trim T-Rock here in the petroleum blue from the rear. Yes, style has different fake exhausts. <laughs> here, actually, um, yeah, this is just one area then. Uh, however, here it has more off-roadish look as well here, like, once again with the gray contrast. Kaki remains the old one, but I think it's a good decision because the new high gloss black ones, like in the Golf 8, yeah, they just look less good or worse. You can also say, prefer this one. Then door closing sound, really good. Golf jeans still, nice sound. Then inside of the doors, sadly, this is here still hard pack, but new door insert here in leather red, soft elbow cover. And what's really new, they worked on the dashboard, completely new dashboard and also here this stitching style. and. This is now soft touch. Before it was hard pack, now here soft touch, so that's an upgrade. This being the style trim level, you still have real buttons on the steering wheel. This will be different with the R-Line and the R, I'm soon going to show you that. 
one reason to stick with the style trim level or the base trim levels to be easier able to control these buttons on the steering wheel. I think it looks better and it's definitely easier to control. Seats, the base T-Rock would start with normal fabric seats with a little bit different foaming and style and R-Line have a little better foaming on the inside of the seat and this one here, the style, gets then the microfiber inserts, really high quality, nice, and then with some fabric accentuations here and leather red right there. The R-Line also has some different fabric and the sport there styling then as comparison. And optional Ergo Active seat here also, this is an upgrade then that you get lumbar support and also a small form of a seat massage, but that's not really that necessary. Overall, the advantage here of the T-Rock is that you have an upright seating position, although you're not in a big vehicle. And this, you know, is really good also for tall people with 1 meter 86 or 6 foot 1. A lot of headroom here. This is then with the bright headliner. Also another reason to stick with the style, because otherwise the interior gets super, super dark. Uh, as you can soon see also with the R-Line. And here, without the panoramic roof, a lot of headroom left with the panoramic roof. Soon in comparison to that, that's then less steering wheel here up and down, in and out, very smooth process. And upgraded assistance systems, that means when you go for the optional assistance systems pack, you also have the travel assist working up to 210 kilometers an hour. So, you know, lane assist, active one, and also cruise control, and also with capacitive function then, so the car realizes that you here just by touching the steering wheel, you do not have to shake it. In the style trim here, you have these gray inserts here, for example. I think it's a little bit better than, again, the black piano lacquer. Here on the left side, once again, the new steering wheel. The T-Rock now always comes with digital instruments, either 8-inch or these ones here, optional or standard in the style trim, 10.25-inch. Here on the right side, you start in the base level, 6.5-inch, small screen, but already with the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto possibility. And here, this is then the 8-inch screen, the standard for the style trim level and not the biggest screen, but does the job. And here, the advantage is you still have a volume knob menu and also here, a zoom knob you can, for example, use in the infotainment system. The infotainment system itself is not that responsive, actually, but still quite okay. Better, here, you can see there's a zoom knob. So great to have that while driving. So this is the reason I would not go for the optional 9.2 inch screen. I'm soon going to show you that one. This is here, way to go, definitely. Main menu, here, Apple CarPlay integration with cable or wireless. Just a 6.5 inch, a smaller one, just has the cable connection. Here, you can also have the wireless connection already. And you can get a Beats sound system, either with 300 watt or with 400 watt, then in the convertible, has even more punch. And it's actually quite nice for this segment here. Clear sound, not too surroundish, actually, in comparison to big, very expensive systems but already quite decent. Because it's quite complicated, when can you see the map in which screen? Eight inch smaller digital instruments, no map display at all, just arrows. Here, 10.25 inch, you can display the map. When you have the eight inch screen, then you can only show the map on one screen, either in the instruments or here. Only if you have the 9.2 inch, the bigger one, you can display it on both sides. So that's the only advantage of the 9.2 because there's a better chip. However, I would still stick with this solution and then maybe really just swallow it that I can just see it here or here. Maybe it's then better to have it here, to have it in your line of sight. The screen is, by the way, just flickering on camera. Here, map full screen, or you can also limit it some, or this classic view looks quite cool indeed and then you can also just switch what you want to have in the middle part right here more expensive and more options is not always better here the same this is a climatronic it's an option that you now have these touch sliders for a touch solution it's actually quite okay however the classic turning knobs are easier to use while driving and they still exist in the base model and also here in the style model if you don't go for this option just the true r model always comes with this one here but this is an option I would actually leave aside. It looks cooler, but harder to control. Then on the lower part, two USB-C chargers here now. For the phone, also inductive charging pad that was there before this option, but you have a little bit more space in here. This is a new DSG shifting lever if you have the automatic gearbox. It, you know, feels quite nice, good, and you know, 
maybe in a way you also have more haptic feedback than with these very small levers you have nowadays. Cup holders sadly are not adaptive at all. That's not too good actually, but then what is better from build quality is here this armrest, very well attached. You can also fold you know, put it forward and then underneath so much space. In the rear, also a lot of headroom with one weighted A6 or 6 with one. Here, once again, the bright headlining, that's really cool. Now, USB C chargers, you can see here. This is also a phase of upgrade, but legroom wise, really close. So, I do hit the front seat. It's soft, it's okay, but it's a short vehicle, so no wonder that there is not plenty of legroom. In the middle part, there's a big middle tunnel. There are also all wheel drive models available. Here, then, cup holders, which are also um, adaptive actually for the side. I haven't seen that one, so this seems also like some, some new thing. Feels a little bit like um, building, you know, building some Lego or something. <laughs> There's also a ski hatch. And well, in the middle part, can you really sit there? It's a little bit higher, um, more or less. This here, the R-Line interior, and I will tell you why you should not go for the R-Line here. Because it looks cool on the exterior, but here on the interior, you automatically get these hashtag capacitive BS buttons then. So they look cool. But it's definitely more complicated to control the cruise control while driving, for example, and also on the right side here to control the instruments. It's just irritating and it's just one button, basically. And then second reason is you have more high gloss piano lacquer, which is scratching, which is yeah, catching scratches, so that and also fingerprints and it just doesn't look that premium. This, by the way, not connected to the R-Line, just a general option, general option, 9.2 inch screen here. This is the bigger screen and there you can see you do not have these buttons anymore. It costs more money, but has length less functionality to me, I think. So rather stick with the eight inch screen. So you can live with a little smaller screen then, but then you have still the buttons for the eight inch. This vehicle is also equipped with an optional panoramic roof. This does cost us some headroom, but it's still okay for tall people in the front. You can also open this one here. It's actually quite a nice feature. It leaves a lot of light and sun inside. Quite wide opening as well. And also difference for the headroom in the rear, of course. Well, it is okay, but you have, you know, this step here and then it goes a little bit up and there you have then space for your head. But definitely if you're Michael Jordan in the rear, you should rather go then without the panoramic roof. You can also open the rear hatch here with the folding logo. And then I have a luggage set up here for you. Unfortunately, because of this top cover, when you have the top cover installed, a cabin trolley here does not fit in the vertical way because this, you know, this is blocking actually, but you can also just, you know, lift it out like this and then it, you know, you have all the way. And you can also push it, push it through a little bit more. Let's see if that works now. That should work, I hope. Mm. No, it doesn't. Okay. That's a problem. Hmm. Yeah. So that is actually, that should work actually, but it doesn't. Yeah. Interesting. Well, but that's why we are here to test it for you. So cabin trolley has to be like this. Then the width here is a meter or 40 inches. That's actually good. The length is yeah a little bit less than 80 centimeters or 30 inches. Yeah. Already fold one of the halves for you this way all the way through and this is the maximum setup here with the length of 1 meters 53 or 59 inches. And the most spectacular and most powerful version remains the T-Rock R with 300 horsepower and this really strong styling. However, since the R-Line is now as sporty from the looks as the true R model, there's not much differentiation anymore. Here once again with the honeycomb style grill than the Big lower bumper, this is a little bit different than here, bigger air intakes right there. Lapis blue is the typical R color and it's still a very, very beautiful one. Also called Thomas blue in auto Gefühl because it's among my favorite colors. Then 18 inch wheels would be standard, 19 inch also option for the R in special stylings. Bigger brake disc also with blue brake calipers, 17 inch these brakes. And then once again, stronger from the side bumper here a little bit and also towards the rear really strong C-pillar here, also once again in lapis blue, and you also get these new tail lamps. And this is the interior of the T-Rock R, the true R model. 
and you can either get dark or these blue inserts here, matte styling. So this looks definitely more screaming out. The highlight here, however, definitely the seats. They have more side bolstering than with microfiber inside at the sides of the inside here. And then with the blue fabric on the inside and also with the R stamping or the R stitching here. And indeed, they are more comfortable. So they are sportier and more comfortable at the very same time. One of the reasons I would prefer the R. Yeah, um, you know, when you discuss it at home and say like, I know I want to have 300 horsepower. Why do you need 300 horsepower? Yeah, because the seats are more comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> I always give you the best, best uh, tips and tricks. The only thing is here with the R, you have the capacitive buttons here at the steering wheel. You also have a separate R button. And then you can also take a look at here at the um, infotainment system. It can directly hop to the race mode here. Either you click them through normally like this, but if you press and hold here, it directly hops to the race mode all-wheel drive, 50-50 maximum distribution, and with the launch control, this vehicle here goes 4.9 seconds to 1 km an hour or 62 miles an hour. And that you can shift yourself as well with these huge shifting pedals. Here also in the rear of the R, you can very well see this kind of single seat setup, and also the nice sporty situations with the gray microfiber for the rear seats. Yeah, that looks really fancy, the best part of the R, definitely. As for engines, here the T-Roc R, 2.0-liter 4-cylinder, turbo petrol engine, 300 horsepower, all-wheel drive, front plus rear on demand. No torque split here, as in the new Tiguan R, the Golf 8 or the R Tiguan R, because this one here is still based on the older platform. If you go a little bit lower down in the engine spec, the 2.0-liter turbo petrol engine, 4-cylinder, is also available with 190 horsepower, also all-wheel drive. Even further down below, 1.5-liter four-cylinder with 150 horsepower or the one-liter three-cylinder with 110 horsepower. The two small engines, these are actually connected with the convertible as well, so the convertible cannot be bought with the two-liter engine. And then there's also the two-liter TDI available still. And you also still get the convertible, the T-Roc Cabriolet, and it's very interesting because this also receives the same facelift update, although it's just on the market for about one and a half years now. That's very unusual. This also here, the King's red color, a very strong red tone. And here, the new teal blue. This one here, exclusive color for the convertible. Once again, it's very unique on the market because no one else offers an SUV convertible at this moment. And especially in this vehicle color here, it really looks a little bit like a toy car, doesn't it? And yeah, about 30,000 pieces have been sold worldwide. This is not you know, that much actually, but you know that amount that they say they still want to keep building it. Overall, in about four years now for the T-Roc, one million pieces have been sold. That's really massive. So number three of the best sellers, Tiguan, Golf, and then the T-Roc for the Volkswagen brand. It also looks really interesting when it's closed and roof opening process, about nine seconds to close, a little bit longer, 11 seconds, and works up to a speed of 30 kilometers an hour. At least you have to start it at that speed. Then when it's running, you can also drive a little bit faster. Which cars are most often compared to with the T-Roc, or what do people search for? Indeed, T-Roc versus Golf, or the T-Roc versus the bigger SUV, the Tiguan. You can check out these reviews.